In studio, the Principal Secretary of the Ministry of Health, that is Julius Korir, to answer some, answer some of the questions that have been raised and definitely on the minds of many Kenyans as this touches many of their lives. First of all, does this come in direct response to the allegations of a scandal at the Afia House, 5.3 billion shillings being misappropriated? Uh, thank you, Masai, for inviting me to come to the studio to shed some light on the happenings that we've witnessed today. Um, as you said, yes, from what we got from the U.S. government, it is in response to the sensational internal audit that was uh, released prematurely to the public. And um, but since then, a number of activities have happened. You say this is a sensational uh, internal audit and reports that came out. Then, uh, is this a, re a sensational response by USAID? No, um, I think uh, what we've done is that um, there were some allegations that were made. And as a result of that, what the government did was to invite the National Treasury Internal Audit Team, which was comprising of a number of officers from various ministries, who came and did quality check on the audit that uh, was leaked out before it was uh, done. And on the basis of that, the conclusion of the report was that um, there was no loss of cash. Right. I think that is the first fact. However, a number of weak internal controls which are administrative in nature, were identified. And since last year, October, up to now, we've implemented about 99% of all those internal controls. When you're talking about weak internal controls, uh, would this be the internal controls and loopholes that would lead to loss of money? Um, not necessarily. You see, and what would it lead to if it, they're weak uh, internal controls it's that only you have now gone into action, swung into action to rectify? No, in any system, uh, you will appreciate with me that um, there would be some oversights, there would be some uh, weak checks and balance uh, checks uh, to ensure that accuracy is done. Uh, you'll find that maybe some contracts are entered into and maybe not proper uh, provisions are made to ensure that the quality is uh, supplied. So those were the weaknesses that now we are trying to see how um, the procurement procurement uh, uh, the public procurement act mm -hmm. uh, is implemented the regulations they are in the guidelines that are provided are adhered to to the letter oh, so yeah. but in terms of uh, the main conclusion of the report was that no money was lost okay you're fast yeah. to say that no money was lost but yeah. if indeed 99 percent of the weak internal controls were addressed or have been addressed by the ministry no. then why would the uh, u.s aid uh, kick in with a uh, suspension. No, I'll let you, li like for example, one of the areas that um, was picked out was that documentation was not properly filed. Now, at the time when the auditor came in, uh, f f documents were at various stages of processing, either of payments and all that. So when they asked for a certain document and it's not availed, it was assumed that documents are being hidden so that money can be lost, uh, can be stolen. But after now, when this internal audit um, uh, quality check came in, they were able now to get all the documents that, that had been put together because they were at various stages of uh, uh, payment process or um, procurement process or finance, budgeting and all that. So when all that was put together, then the, the, the gaps that were there were realized that there was no cash that had actually been lost. So those are some of the things. And then the other thing is that maybe a contract was entered into which, um, for example, no clear milestones were indicated. Okay. Uh, yeah. When you talk about the gaps that are being bridged right now, yeah. first of all, when did you implement this 99% uh, you know, of quality control of the internal uh, control leakages and weaknesses? Okay. In earnest, the implementation of the recommendations from the, the internal audit, the, that is the quality audit that was done, w was started in January. And between January and now, we've done nearly everything. Even last week uh, to, uh, on Friday, mm -hmm. I had an engagement with the development partners where I was giving them a report on where we were in implementing some of the concerns they had. And we've agreed with them again on a roadmap for the next one month on what we need to do okay. so that they get the assurance that as a ministry we care for the money resources bestowed upon us by the 
public as well as also the development partners. Well, the, the, the one of the development partners, that is USAID, who give 65 billion shillings, uh, has you know, withdrawn 2.1 billion shillings. That's mm -hmm. a substantial amount, even though mm -hmm. in the bigger, in the larger picture, it's it's seemingly small, but it's a substantial amount. Mm -hmm. Then it seems there is there's some conditions they had placed that have not been met. In, on mm -hmm. May 4th, they did write to you, the Ministry of Health, asking for some uh, action to be taken so that or else there will be some specified uh, mm -hmm. action, unspecified action in which we have seen the results of. Mm -hmm. What were they demanding? Um, actually, um, the letter you're referring to, um, we got it, and that's why we had a meeting, an urgent meeting with them last Friday on 5th. And on that meeting, we were now laying out to them what measures we've done. You've said, but what were they demanding? It's again strengthening the internal control system. That was it. So they're not content yeah. with the 99 percent The other thing that, that they're saying, uh, maybe what I would also want to say is that when this report w reached public and the fear of the loss of the 5.3 billion, various arms of government swung into action. Anti-corruption came into the scene. Kenya National Audit came in also to do forensic audit. Those are diff independent agencies of government that are doing their thing, and we're waiting for them to give us the report. But on, in terms of administrative action that needs to be done, we've done everything. Well, in terms of administrative action, mm -hmm. for those who were there when you know this particular scandal was said to have happened late last year, uh, it just seemed to have, uh, you know, the action that was taken seemed to have been just a transfer. And we're talking about the, the PS who was uh, mentioned in this particular, in this particular um, um, report and scandal. Uh, not quite a convincing action taken by the government for us to see this action taken by some of your development uh, partners. I think that one, uh, the issue, uh, that one I may not be able to uh, give you a very co uh, a concrete answer on that one. Okay. But what I would like to say is that, um, let me also put some light to the magnitude of and the impact of this suspension. One, you've rightly said that we get a, a, a support of to the tune of 65 billion. And the, the, the context of this is that this is a four-year program where the U.S. government gives us support to supply quite a number of uh, supplies that address the challenges that we have in the health sector. So the 65 billion is for the four year period. Now the 2.1 billion also is for the same period, 2.1. Right. And um, we've done uh, quick calculations to see, and um, this is about 2.5 to 3% of the total support that we get from the development partners. So not a big deal? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Right. I think that is one thing I would like to so say. So what is the contingency in terms of now, now that this is withdrawn, what are you going to do? As it is, we're trying to look at the resources within government to ensure that um, support to the projects is not affected. The good thing is that the essential supplies, that is uh, medicine, uh, kits that we use to test, as well as also the equipment that is very critical, that one has not been affected. Right. And what we'll do is that we'll leverage on the various government structures to ensure that these supplies reach the people that are intended And Ambassador Gorek said this will not definitely affect uh, directly Kenya. Yes. Um, uh, but how long will this take? How, when will the suspension be lifted? Because uh, you've said you've given <coughs> them a one-month plan. Um, one thing is that uh, the approach that we've taken as a ministry is that whatever measures that we are implementing, it's a joint effort between ourselves and the development partners. Right. We had a meeting last week on Friday with them. We've agreed on a roadmap. They are also giving us additional suggestions on how we need, what we need to do to ensure that administrative structures and internal controls are strengthened. Which we are keen on implementing. We were very keen. We are having another review meeting this Friday with okay. them again. Right. And our intention as a ministry is that um, this suspension is lifted as soon as possible. Right. We would wish that if possible in, within this month, We've uh, sorted out whatever issues that are there. And one thing I would like also to, to dissuade the general public is that um, the perception that the minister has been doing nothing is there. However, when we met with the development partners, they were surprised at how far we had gone in implementing their concerns. How surprised were they for them to give you unfortunately, this suspension? But, unfortunately, but, as you say, yes. the letter that was referred to, this letter actually which came out today, yes. 
by 4th had been written. All right. Yeah. Well, so when we met on 5th, we were just like trying to discuss something that already a decision has been made, okay. but which we respect and we really appreciate also the support we get for the development. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Bona P.S. Uh, yeah. Julius uh, Korir for shedding some light on this a story that we will definitely follow uh, in the day.